Okay, we're going to talk about today the money market graph. So, uh, the money market graph is really when we're looking at monetary policy. Remember, monetary policy is policy that is dictated by the Federal Reserve. And remember, the Federal Reserve has three different ways in which they can dictate policy. They can raise or lower the reserve requirement. They can raise or lower the discount rate. Or they can do open market operations, buy or sell bonds which is mainly the one that they're going to do most often. So let's take a look at our money market graph. So just like any graph that we've seen in economics so far, it's going to start out like this. And up here we're going to have what's called the nominal interest rate. The nominal interest rate is the interest rate here and now. It's not adjusted for inflation. Down here on the bottom, you're going to have the quantity of money. All right, so this is the quantity of money. On a vertical, right here, you're going to have the money supply. So this is the supply of money, um, all the M1 money. And just like any other demand, you're going to have demand uh, for money going this way. Money demanded, and then what we're going to have here is where these two come together. This is your nominal interest rate. Down here, you have quantity, okay, again, quantity of money. All right, so what we're looking at here is remember, I just told you the three different things that the Federal Reserve can do they can raise or lower the reserve requirement, they can raise or lower the discount rate, or they can buy or sell bonds. So, if the Federal Reserve decides to take monetary policy action to expand the economy, that means that the Federal Reserve wants to increase the money supply. So if we increase, we're going to shift to the right. So now we have money supply. It's going to be this way. And the way that the Federal Reserve gets that is by buying bonds. Buying bonds will shift the curve to the right. So buy. Buying bonds. Again, if you have Eric Dodge's five steps to a five book, the device he uses is buy bonds equals bigger bucks. So we're going to have more bucks in the marketplace. Now, you'll notice here what has happened to the nominal interest rate when there's more money supply. The interest rate has decreased. Why? Because there's more money supply. So now it is an opportunity for those that are wanting to perhaps get some type of loan. Now that the interest rate is lower, it, uh, it creates a little bit more competitive environment for those wanting to get those loans. So the interest rate has now decreased. However, if the Federal Reserve decides that they want to have what's called tight policy or contract the economy, what they will do is they will decrease the supply of money. So it'll look something like this. We'll call this MS2. Now we're going this way. And now you'll notice what has happened to our nominal interest rate. It is increased. It is increased from our original line. Again, this one was decreased. In this case here, what we have is we are going to sell treasury securities, sell bonds. Selling means we have smaller bucks. Okay, so as we continue on in AP macro, we will look at the money market graph and specifically how it interacts with the ADAS uh, graph as well.